Hello and welcome to Public Defib TV. I'm your host, Lawrence Sabin, and uh, thrilled to have our guest here, uh, yet another guest on Public Defib TV, our show about saving lives with AEDs. Um, obviously, with AEDs, CPR and AEDs go hand in hand. And so I'm thrilled to have our guest here, who's Brandy Van Vossen. She's the owner of Action CPR in Albuquerque. And welcome. Thank welcome you. to the show. Thank you for having me. Indeed, Great. indeed. So first question, Brandy, um, what got you into CPR training? And tell us a little bit about your background. Well, the business is Action CPR, uh, and it was started by my mom, so it's a family business. And so she started it, kind of took off and needed help. So I just started uh, helping her and then got more and more involved. So uh, this year is 10 years that I've been a BLS instructor for American Heart Association. So it's been just a little bit, a little bit of time. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lifetime. <laughs> So, uh, so tell us, Brandy, what is, um, what's the most gratifying thing about what you do? These are life-saving skills, and I, I imagine your audience uh, is quite different from, you know, people that are coming back every two years for training and others that are getting CPR trained for the first time. What's the most gratifying thing about what you do? I think when people actually do get it, they realize that it's not complicated, it's not difficult, and that they can do something to help someone and that they don't have to be intimidated or afraid to help and that it's something that really just about anyone can do. What are their apprehensions when they come in for the first time, let's say? That they'll do it wrong, uh, that maybe someone else could do it better, that they should wait for someone with more training to arrive. And so um, it's neat to be able to let them know, yes, I can do it when they are practicing, when they're using the AED, seeing how simple it really can be. So. Sure. Okay. And when does that change as you're doing a, a class? Is it when their hands are on the mannequin or uh, when they're, you know, able to use an AED successfully or what stage do they, does the kind of, you know? It depends. I think sometimes it's when I ask a question and they know the answer. But yeah. then they feel, oh, okay, I do know this. Uh, sometimes it's when we use the AED and they turn it on and look at it and see, but it's not something to be afraid of. Um, I've had, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple people call me and say that they helped someone after an event, and so um, they really recognized that it was good that they knew it. Yeah, very good. And so you do the training, uh, sometimes at your training center and sometimes on location with a business. So when you go to a business, you know, how do you approach the class and, you know? So if I know what they do, um, so I have that background, then I can ask different questions about where they might be if they're using these skills. Uh, if they have an AED, that's my first question. Do you know if you have an AED here? Uh, second question would be, where is it? And so I don't usually <laughs> get the correct answer. <laughs> um, but then once they start recognizing where it is, how easy it is, and that if they do need to use it, that it really will save someone's life. Um, one of the things I tell people is we wouldn't buy a car nowadays without an airbag. Right. We need that airbag. We don't expect to use it, but if there is an emergency, we want it there. And it's the same thing with an AED. We don't really expect to use it, but if there's an emergency, you really want that there because it will save someone's life. Yeah. Um, pediatric. Uh, you know, we think of sudden cardiac arrest and we think of somebody, you know, who's got risk risk factors, but sudden cardiac arrest happens to youth too. Mm -hmm. So is that a surprising thing, you know, with, it, with, with your audience? Are they kind of surprised that it could happen to a teen, for instance? I think teen, it's been in the news a little bit more, so they're more aware of that. Um, I think when we talk about child and infant, recognizing what puts them there, and that being a different issue, being a respiratory issue, that could be, that turns into a cardiac issue potentially. That's what is scary to them, is that they know children can have breathing problems, but then the relation to the breathing affecting the heart and going into cardiac arrest. Elaborate a little bit, uh, Brandy. Our, our, our audience may not be familiar, so what are some of these things that can, can prompt? So certainly drowning, uh, and that drowning is a respiratory issue. Lack of oxygen affects the heart, but asthma, choking, um, getting into chemicals that should be locked up, children can ingest something, suppresses the respiratory drive. And so when they enter into cardiac arrest, they're in a different condition than an adult who's had it because of a heart attack. 
And so their um, damage that occurs, the lack of oxygen, we really need to take immediate action because they really get um, to a very bad place very quickly when it gets to that point. So um, we do think about this for adults, grandparents, parents, but children, they can end up there for different reasons. Yeah. Um, now, you're doing a class, let's say, for a corporation or for a government entity, but these individuals that are attending the class then have these life-saving skills. Um, they could use those in their home. They could use those in public. Can you speak to that a little bit? So I let people know it's not just about work, uh, doing it because you have to, but who would you be using this on? And but there's a very high chance that you're using this on a family member or friend in a home setting, not even at work. And so it's not just because I have to, but really because I want to know just in case. Mm -hmm. What about trends? What do you? What else are you seeing, Brandy, as far as trends in the industry, or you know, um, yeah. So I do think that AEDs are going to become more mandatory for public buildings. Um, we see fire extinguishers everywhere. We don't ever see them hardly being used, but they're there just in case. And I think a AED will become the next thing that we just see as a safety measure. Um, I know in other countries that they have AEDs very prevalently and. Um, put there. Sometimes people are worried about, well, if I take it off the wall and I put it on someone who doesn't need it, I can use this as a weapon and it's not <laughs> something to be afraid of. We're not going to misuse an AED. It's not going to let you shock someone unless they need it. So, But if they need it, that needs to be done as quickly as possible. And uh, latest guidelines with the American Heart Association are the 2015 guidelines. Mm -hmm. Update our audience. What's what's new with CPR? And the question that always comes up about rescue breaths. So, you know, <laughs> please share. So um, the guidelines went to 30 compressions and two breaths back in 2005. 2010, they kept that guideline. And for 2015, they've still re uh, retained that 30 to 2. So the rescue breathing or the rescue breaths, uh, sometimes people don't want to. They're worried about disease. They don't want to put their mouth on someone's, um, a stranger's mouth. But the act of giving the breath, of putting oxygen in the body is still important. And so what American Heart Association says is that hands-only or compression-only CPR is better than nothing. But if that was our loved one on the ground, what we would want to provide is superior not just better than nothing, so quality. So we want to do our 30 and 2 to give them the best chance of survival. Perfect. Brandy, this is this is great. Our audience, so many of our audience have, you know, been CPR trained, but we also have a large group uh, that's, you know, that's not. So I think that this is really, really helpful. So. Great. Uh, anything to add, Brandy? No, I think that uh, if you do sit through a course, if you get the information, you see how unintimidating it is, how easy it is, and how an AED is not something to be afraid of and something not to hesitate to use if it's necessary, with or without training. Well, Brandy, I want to thank you on behalf of the team at Public Defib TV. You're teaching life-saving skills, and this is an important, important role, and we appreciate all the CPR inst instructors across the nation. This is, this is important work, and so thank you for what you do. Thank you. And uh, thank you for being our guest. Great. Thanks.